Last time out, we had gotten to the winter break of our 12th season at the club. We're in fourth place and doing well in the Europa League. I'm starting to think we can have a successful season regardless of what happens next. However, in the next stage, we're going to reach the youth intake. And we have no idea what's going to happen in Europe or the league. So let's jump into that phase and see what happens next, shall we? The first game we had after the winter break ended was actually in the Europa League league phase. And we took on Nice and came from behind to beat them. Much to my own shock. I couldn't believe it happened either. But we did well. And the fact we won meant we were given a very strong possibility of doing well in this competition. But the next game was against Bilbao. How did we do in that? Unfortunately, in the next match, we didn't do so well against Bilbao. We were beaten 2-0 thanks to Amaro Romero Brace. And it's unfortunate. He's quite good. The new gen looks quite good, actually, doesn't he? Look at that. But yes, he did quite well. Got two goals against us and made sure we were losing by two goals to nil. However... How did we do in the league phase of the Europa League? So shockingly, we managed to get into the top eight of the Europa League and do it quite well. We've already got a player that's got 11 goals in this competition now. We're also in March, but still, we managed to get a top eight finish. And I like to think we have an opportunity to do quite well in the last 16. Can we get to the quarterfinal of the European competition for the very first time? However, we had league games first, and we lost 3-1 to Wisla Krakow in the first of those games. Kenneth Burrow got a hat-trick. This guy has got a ridiculous record in Poland, and might legitimately be an amazing player. The fact he starts at Norwich makes this ridiculous, honestly. The fact he's doing this well, and is scoring this many goals for Krakow is just mental. I hate the fact he's in Poland, and is thriving so much. At least we had the next game and we won it by two goals to nil against Bebek. So, yay for that. We actually are scoring goals. Just since he's getting a goal here and Kalanick scoring again. So, proving we're not one-trick ponies and that we can continue to progress. Can we do more, though? Well, we took on Chikaliania and we drew one all. It wasn't our best game. We let a one-goal lead slip and it was their only shot on target. And they scored of it. I'm a bit annoyed by this result. I feel like we should have won the game, quite frankly. And then we took on Medietz and drew one all again. They actually were a bad team in this game, to be honest with you, on shots and goal. But we had a bit XG. We should have done more. And the fact we dropped two more points here means that our chance of the game to Europe is slimming down by the day. I don't like the fact we're struggling to get results now in games that we really should be winning. Then we took on Nice in the Europa League round of 16 and we took the lead inside 61 minutes before we conceded three goals in the next 25 minutes. Yeah, last 25 minutes of the game, we lost the match pretty much by conceding three goals and it's an uphill battle from here to do well. Look at the XG, we really should have got a second goal here and we were the better team for a lot of the first half but after we scored, they just woke up like a dragon Waking up from its rest and realising it needs to do something about itself. And yeah, they just completely obliterated us, unfortunately. Hopefully, we can do something better in the second leg. What I wish we wouldn't do is draw nil nil against Wedding Mac Madon and blow a chance to go for the table. We don't hit the first part of the game and then just let them back in. Thankfully, no goals are scored, but should I feel fortunate we didn't lose this game? Maybe, I don't know. We then took a niece in the... Round at 16 in Europa League and lost 2 0 in the second leg. It's not fun, but we did beat them in the league phase, so honestly, I think they're just getting revenge for that. It's just unfortunate we dropped another good opportunity to go through to the next round of the Europa League. I want to win a European competition with this team. And I feel got and the fact we got to the round of 16 in both the Europa Conference League and the Europa League tells me we're in the right direction. But we need to get into the Europe again next year. At least we won the last game we had against Gornick and yeah we really need to start winning quickly and if you realize what is happening here in the XG's table and the match story we were lucky not to lose I can't be I'm saying that but they actually doubled our XG and had more shots on goal than we did I don't know how we didn't lose this game but we're kind of fortunate to have gotten away with all three points ouch it says how bad we've been doing 
that we are suddenly now struggling to get results. And I am just going to say this here now. We should not be struggling so much that we're literally down in 7th place. So yeah, since we come back, we've picked up 2 wins and drawn 3 times. We're drawing too many games. It's costing us an opportunity to get into Europe. Even if we are still only 13 points off Slask, we are still only 5 points off 2nd and 3rd place. We can get European football still. We just need to make sure we get the results in the last 9 games of the league campaign. It's frustrating that we're slipping up this much and we're making it harder for ourselves when we really should be doing the absolute best we can. We want to get into Europe this year because we can't win the cup. We need to actually progress again. It's frustrating that we're slipping up so hard. That being said, we've had a youth intake and there's at least one silver line to this. It's not a terrible intake even if the personalities are not great. But let's go with the players that are of interest to me. So I looked at this guy, and Nazgadar is not the best player in the world. If anything, I feel a little oh, underwhelmed by him. I think his physicals really accelerate his star rating in the minds of the backroom star, but he's a promising winger either way. I do need him to be better, but he's got a lot of 9s and 10s. So he could be better than I'm actually giving him credit for. I just look at his physicals, and I think that's the only reason he got 2-star. Legit, I don't see him being a 2-star otherwise. But either way... Winger or inverted winger? What would you use him as? I need to hear your thoughts and opinions on this. He's not a striker. Even if he, he could be a striker. But I'm not going to use him as a striker. Most because while he's quick, he doesn't have all the attributes I'm looking for. Composure's the main one there. But winger could be okay there. Inverted winger could do the job, but not perfect. Then we get our first striker. Christian Kimmich. And Kimmich is like one of those players that... I know I'm saying his name wrong, but Christian is a definite player that I feel like can be really, 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 really good. Christian feels like a player that I feel like will be very good on his day. He's got 50 aggression though, so he could be a pressing forward, but he's not very brave. So that rules that out immediately. But advanced forward, I can see it working. He just needs to work on a few other attributes and he'll be fine. Hopefully, someday, eventually. He's got two-star kind of ability. I, I feel like I have to give this guy some credit. And he's also fairly sporting. He's not unambitious like the other guy. But he's also a promising striker in the eyes of the media. So, yay. I just wish he wasn't inconsistent. And then we've got Sakura, who's a one-star kind of ability player. Two composure, one first touch. Inconsistent. I might never play this game. Especially when he's got a volatile media handling style and he's unambitious. I can see myself... Just having a lot of issues with this idiot. That and he argues with officials as a goalkeeper. What the actual hell? I can't even say he's got many good attributes about him because he's inconsistent and he is competitive. He's also only six foot. So I feel like this guy is one of the very few times I'm going to say goalkeeper. Ha! Mistake. But we've got Davidovic who is another striker apparently and also a winger. Is he a winger or striker? Now, this guy could absolutely be a pressing forward. He's got the attributes for it, unlike some people. And pressing forward on support. I could see that, actually. Or I could make him a deep line. No, pressing forward on support is the one for me, I think, with this guy. He could be a pressing... He could be an advanced forward on the attack, but pressing forward on support is the one for me. He's also determined. Yes, he's inconsistent, but he's not terrible. Unlike some other players that I've seen so far, he's honestly a little exciting. I actually feel like this could be my favourite player of the bunch. I could make him a winger. Inverted, mind you, apparently. I don't know why he's inverted, but he can. And there's just something about him I just like. We've also got this defender who's six foot one, Unambitious, though. But he's unflappable, so there's that. Why he's got 11 free kicks taken, I'll never know. But I'm not complaining. He could be useful. I just never will use him as a, th a free kick taker, though. And, yes, I think maybe ball playing defender, if I ever get that good. Don't know. But he's got potential. Actually, never mind that. He's got two vision. Yeah, send it back on defend. Let's do that instead. But, yeah, he could be decent. Whether or not he becomes decent, I don't know. But he could be worse. But, yes, that's a few things that's happened. I'm hoping things get better sooner rather than later. And hopefully we don't have to worry so much.
Also, I sold this guy over 105,000 because he was complaining, 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 and he was going to leave the end of his contract. And I decided, you know what, I'll sell him instead. We sold him 105,000 to Lego Warsaw. Uh, he's only played for the second team. It was either that, or I just let him go at the end of his contract to his time when I'm never going to have to use him myself. So it just made sense to sell him, really. It really did. Also, I got another 19th physio. I've also bought in Stanislav Rusev as a recruitment analysis, even though I don't sign any play pool. I did bring in Joel Vaquez as a second coach because we lost one of ours to Real Madrid. No, seriously, Lasky went to Real Madrid as their under 19th manager. That's how he lost him. We also signed a new goalkeeping coach in Thomas Dahl. And also, I actually know I'm butchering that name, but he's incredible. Resolute personality and he's one of the best goalkeeping coaches I've ever seen. If I don't make him even better, I don't know what's happening here. I'm also trying to get, into, get a further coaching badge. I think you can see why I'm excited for this guy, right? He's a four and a half star coach for me. It makes sense for me to prioritize him over everyone else so far. Also, Dubrovsky has not made a start for Lille yet, but he's still playing 22 games. So he's always made an appearance for the bench and has not had the rest of races as a result. I wish he would do well for them. I really do. He's actually played for Poland though, so that's nice. Matthias Saul has moved to Hoffenheim. Yes, this happened. I don't think I mentioned it last time out, but yes. He moved in the general transfer window, so it literally just happened in this last period of time, for 29.5 million. It's a record for one of my players this season, and he's starting every game for them. So, yeah, Hoffenheim are actually splashing the cash with this guy, and are using him. It's great. I love the fact that Hoffenheim are using him on, like, Frankfurt. Thank you, and make sure he gets better, please. So, Ricky is still at Torino, which really makes you wonder what have happened here. When Hoffenheim signed him for 8 million, but then signed the left back for 29.5 million. But at least he's playing. He's a starter at Torino in the Serie A. I cannot be upset by this. He's also got a goal for Poland, but there you go. Kasper Szczecki is now at Paderborn. Yes, that's happened. And it happened in this window. So he signed for 1.84 million. And when you look at how much they pay for him, that's a bit of a drop in value. Oh, if only I kept hold of him and he didn't get sold by the board. We could be fine. He's playing the second test. He's not even starting, for goodness sake. Kozak's still at Arsenal. Still not played a game for them. Okay, he's played three times. He's actually played a few games, mostly from the bench. But he's okay. He's actually playing. So maybe he's got some hope. He's actually getting football. I can't believe this. Misa Zewas is now at Schalke. Yes, this has happened. And they signed him for 9.25 million. I love the fact this happened, but he's at Schalke and he's not starting every game for them, but he's actually getting football at Schalke, which is better than nothing. He started nine times in the Bundesliga. You'd hope they'd be using him, given the money they pay for him, but look at the value he's got now. Isn't that incredible? Financially, we're down to six to 10 million and hopefully that'll be better sooner rather than later. But I am going to end this here. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I hope you guys will like and share this video and that you subscribe to the channel. We does help me a lot. Do you think we can finish in the top five in the league this year. And you think we had a good run in the Europa League. I want to hear your thoughts and opinions on that down below. But either way, until next time, goodbye and well, good night.